So I've been trying to figure out which favorite genre to do next, and I've decided because of the way that the world is right now, I've decided to do feel-good books. So my favorite uh, books that feel like a warm hug. <laughs> um, this is a blend of nonfiction and fiction because I believe that both can be uplifting. Um, and I have a lot. I have more than I thought that I would. So um, I'm excited to share them with you. And as always, let me know if you have read any of these or if you want to read any of them or planning to read any of them. Um, or as always, if you have recommendations because um, I think it's a good time to share with others our favorite feel-good novels. So, okay, um, let's get into it. Um, I don't think I'm going to really have any rhyme or reason to going through these, so let's just get into it. Um, first is a book I read recently called Funny Farm by Laura Zales or Lori Zaleski. And it's my unexpected life with 600 rescue animals. It is a nonfiction book. And I adored this book. Um, this is about a woman who runs this rescue farm. Uh, and it's kind of funny because it talks about like how she got into it. not how she expected her life to go. And it's just a really sweet, uplifting book. Um, she did, she did have some child drama, so there's a little bit of sadness in it. And also, um, you know, animals do unfortunately pass away, so it is talked about in this book, but overall I felt that this book, this woman, and what she does for these animals is just absolutely incredible. There's really funny stories in there. All of these animals are like messed up in some way. Um, and it's just a really sweet book. I did cry a little bit. Um, but it, it, for me, it gives me hope because I'm a huge animal lover. And um, I know I've said this before, but my dream job would be to have a farm like this and just have, you know, a sanctuary for animals. So this book really uh, spoke to me and I just love it. And um, you can follow her, The Funny Farm on social media and see all of the cute animals on there. So I really love this book. I'm 
sometimes you can find people in your life who accept you for who you are, flaws and all. And that's kind of like the story of the friendship in this book, so I really like that.
so it kind of just goes into her life and um, just really neat stories. Um, and there's just something very comforting about this book. Um, you know, it talks, like I said, it talks a lot about things that have happened over uh, generations um, that weren't necessarily fun for any. It's it's a really a really good book, and I think it's just like I also love New York City, so it's almost like it's close to my heart because I just feel like it's almost, it's like a love letter to New York City almost. Um, I just think. Sometimes it's good to laugh at our pain, you know? And remember that that's okay. That sometimes it's just kind of ridiculous.
video, The Gun Goal by Stephen Rowley. This book made me laugh out loud and also cry. Uh, love this book. Can't say enough good things about it. Um, it's fiction. And, um, I don't want to, like, give away anything because I get really excited about talking about this book. But it's about a, um, famous gay man who was on a long-running TV show and now he lives in Palm Springs and he has a sister who, or is his sister who's a friend? I can't remember. I think it's his sister. I can't remember. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, who passes away and so, and the father is not doing well and needs to go to rehab. So, it is requested of him to take care of the two children. In the meantime, basically they get to spend the summer with him. And, um, so I will say there are some sad parts in this, obviously, you know, dealing with loss and grieving. And that's kind of the overarching theme. However, this book is laugh out loud funny. The dialogue is so hilarious and witty. The kids are so funny. And just the relationship that builds between them over the course of the summer is so, once again, why we're all here. It's like a warm hug. And uh, I just love this book. Um, I truly treasure this book because it's just, I love when something is capable of making you laugh and cry. Um, it's hard not to love it. kind of like a horrible thing in common um, that they're all dying 
fiction book about a, um, how do I describe it? Overall, it discusses how women are often put and defined by our roles and it kind of like as a mother, daughter, sister, rather than like who we are as individual people and how uh, that strips away who we are and kind of our realness and our rawness and our, I mean, what makes us us, individualism. And it's just an incredible book and it is so powerful in its message. And um, I can't recommend this book enough. Every woman needs to read this book because it's really easy um, to be put into, you know, these things as a woman that people think that you should be. And um, that can be tough because you kind of lose sight of your, who you are in yourself. I know that I feel a lot of pressure as an adult woman. Um, you know, I get the question a lot of like people asking, when are you going to have kids, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, I just kind of want to be left alone. <laughs> so anyways, um, I guess I, I should say, I just don't want to be seen as somebody's like mother, even if I do have kids, you know, it's like, that's not all I want to be. Um, I'm still me, you know, and I think, I think, you know, mothers feel that way a lot of the time is that they lose themselves into just being somebody's mother. So anyways, it's not all about motherhood. Otherwise I couldn't relate, but it's a very, very good book and she is just an incredible writer and she's very authentic and honest and, um, it's just, it's such a good book. Highly, highly recommend this book. Okay, um, next. I've talked about this book so many times, so I won't dive into it. I'll just tap on it. <laughs> World of Wonders, Embrace of Fireflies, Whale Sharks, and Other Astonishments by Amy I don't know how to pronounce her name, the last name, I'm so sorry. Um, long story short, this book is um, a book of short stories, and it ties to, um, how do I put it? It ties in like a special animal, and then relates it back to like a story about this woman's life, and this book uh, is, is really special to me, um, because I was going through a particularly bad depressive episode. I read this book in like a day. It's very short and made me feel 10 times better. Just uh, the epitome of a warm mug. And it's, I mean, I love animals, so it already had that um, appeal to me. And I just, I just loved it. Um, I thought it was just, it's just a really beautiful book. It's hard to describe really what it's about. Uh, nonfiction. Um, if I didn't already say that. And I just love this book. I can't say enough good things about this book either. One of my all time favorites. some really beautiful pictures in here too. Okay, and last but not least is The Little Shop of Found Things by Paula Braxton. This is a fantasy fiction novel and um, it's actually a series and I love it.
this is a spoiler, but the daughter can uh, sense a, I don't want to call it like it's, she's not psychic per se, she can touch these antique items and get a sense for like their history and like their stories, if that makes sense. Um, so she can kind of determine if they are special to someone. Um, it's really, I'm trying not to give anything away at all. Um, anyways, it's very good. It's a very cozy fantasy time travel novel. Um, a series. So.